Good morning. Uh, thank you guys all for coming this morning uh, for our webinar titled Simple Solutions for Remote Process Monitoring. Uh, my name is AJ Piscor. I am the Combustion and Control Specialist uh, for Lessman Instrument Company. I've been with the company uh, since 2014. Uh, prior to that, I spent about 10 years with our manufacturing partner, Maxon, as a technical sales engineer. And before that, uh, I was working for uh, Midwest Vaco Specialty Chemicals Division in Charleston. Uh, I hold a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering and mechanics from the University of Minnesota. Uh, with me today is Dan Wisey. Uh, he is also a uh, product specialist. He's our in-house instructor uh, for process instrumentation, hardware, and software. And since 1978, uh, Dan has been involved in all facts of data acquisition and process instrumentation, uh, from sales and commissioning to service and product support. He's a longtime member of ISA, has been with Lesman since 1988. And in his own words, Dan's the guy who reads all the manuals nobody else reads. In our customer's words, he's the trainer to call if you want to cut to, so what instrumentation, so it's easy to understand. Uh, so right now I'm going to turn it over to Dan and he's going to kick things off. So Dan, take it away. Thank you, AJ. Welcome to our webinar today on simple products for remote access. And why don't we move on to the next slide? So I'm going to start with the Honeywell trend views because I think that they're probably the easiest things with an application to use via remote access. For those of you that already have them, you know what they are, but there are probably people in the audience that don't. So cover them real quickly here. They're touch screen recorders. They've been out there for about 15 years now. They tend because they're totally electronic and they don't have any moving parts. They tend to be very reliable. Uh, they're used widely for monitoring and also for alarming. We get a lot of people that just have every point is alarmed and they send out emails on alarm and that's how people keep track of things that go wrong in their process. Security is a really big consideration for Honeywell at this point. And in fact, they, their most recent release in firmware for these recorders requires that the recorder have a security certificate that Honeywell issues in order to communicate over the ethernet connection. So I've spent some time in the past two weeks since the firmware came out trying to explain to people why, geez, I just logged into this yesterday and it worked and then I changed the firmware and now it doesn't and we got to get them set up with a security certificate which isn't too hard they email Honeywell and they get it back you know a couple hours later and they install it and it's up and running but uh, security is a serious consideration and these things have just worked out very well for remote access either through the web or FTP or even through an OPC server next slide Next slide. For those of you that don't have a Honeywell Trendview recorder, they come in all different sizes and shapes. The one on the left is the little one that does the, uh, it has fewer channels. The next one over is the little one that has more channels on it. Then you get to the big screen that has lots and lots of channels. And the one on the far right has the big screen on it, but it's actually designed as a drop-in replacement for circular chart recorders. The cutout on the back that fits into the cutout hole in the panel when it's panel mounted, it's the same size as all of Honeywell's other circular uh, chart recorders. So it'll fit right in there. It does have a circular display on it, which you can barely make out in the small graphic there. But most people, when they get it, they actually don't want the circular display. They all go to the YT horizontal or vertical trend that you ordinarily see on strip chart recorders or any kind of uh, data logging type devices. And they have all various options on them as you can see from the, from the uh, chart there. Next. Here is a graphic of a typical uh, screen that you see when you remotely access the recorder from an application that you have on your PC through a VPN. Now, the uh, half of the stuff we're gonna show you today is web access. Web access always assumes that you're getting access outside of the company, through the internet, over a web connection, or an application connection through a virtual private network, a VPN. So that's just sort of a given. 
the, the, the two applications that don't, they have their VPN sort of built into the, the application you're buying. So it's, it's covered there. But this is the screen because the recorder screen, you, you don't ordinarily see at the very top of this, it says v, view a GR multi Nina, and then it gives an IP address. You don't ordinarily see that on your screen. That's because this is the, a, a screenshot of what was on the computer showing you what I'm looking at. And then at the bottom, there's some login information down there, but that's exactly the screen that's on the recorder. Now, if you can transfer over control, AJ, I've got one hooked up here and I'll show you what remote control looks like at this point. I'm logged into that same recorder right now. So I'm gonna come down here and log in to it with a username and a password. And then I'm gonna click on the button called take control. And when it takes control, the button name changes to release control, indicating I now have control over the recorder. Now navigating with my mouse, I wanna change screens. This particular screen is the uh, tank levels and gallons. You can see at the bottom, first tank has 3,400 gallons, second tank has 1,900 gallons and so on. I wanna change screens. So I click on the screen button, click on the list button, and I go to the one that says tanks that are in percentage. And now I have the same screen, but or I have the, the same layout on the screen, but it is a different screen. Now it's uh, got engineering units of percent on there. So I can actually navigate through the recorder showing people or you know looking at what I need to look at on here. If I needed to mark the chart, I could, or, or leave a message after I've logged in, I can click on mark the chart and say data check, Dan Weisey, it's already in there because I did this yesterday to check it. Click on that and now I've left a message at approximately seven minutes after nine. So I can go check my message log and see that under the user messages, I have at seven minutes after nine, I've, the message log says that I did a data check. So we can all see that there. So this is just an example of remotely accessing the recorder from my PC keyboard and mouse or using my PC keyboard and mouse to navigate through the recorder to see what I need to see and gather any data that I need. Why don't we go back to the uh, slide deck? Oops, there we go. This just shows what I went through initially to get into that remote viewing uh, situation. This is the, re the remote display tool up here shows all the recorders that I've got on there. And I clicked on the one I was connected to was uh, Lessman server room one. We got some demo screens on there. Clicked on that. And that's actually a view of the recorder minimized there. So the applications on the left, the actual recorder screens on the right. Next. Or am I in control now? I think I'm in control here. Let's try that. I'm in control now. Okay. Uh, the HC900 control station is Honeywell's process automation controller. It's a rack mount uh, IO unit. Looks like a PLC. Uses a standard type HMI panel that you can see up here over uh, as a ordinary HMI screen and uses ordinary typical developer software to develop the logic to make the thing work. And then you can get remote access to it. They actually have a, a web browser built into it so that you can into the HMI screen so that whatever the HMI screen shows, you can also see that. So that's the best way to get in and see what your data looks like because it's just like what's on the screen itself, just like it was on the recorder. So you use the in, uh, IP information, the IP address, uh, subnet mask, and that sort of thing in order to, and a password security in order to get into it. And you, this will also email on alarms and you get access to the data on the data station and its files. Uh, it saves data in the CSV files and FTP those files up to uh, wherever you want to take them and then open them up and use them in Excel to view the data. 
This is the typical screenshot of the HMI for the HC900. There are the control buttons along the left, the F1, F2, down at the bottom there, there's a home button, the back button, that sort of thing. So those are navigation buttons on the screen itself. They're always there. And then there's the screen display that shows up with, um, in this case, it's got the controller bar graphs and the trend screen in the middle. So it's whatever's on the screen is whatever's there. And it's very similar to the recorder's remote view access where once you take control with your mouse, you can navigate through the screens by navigating through all the uh, screen access information on there. Next, oh, I'm in control. I'm gonna turn it over to you for the uh, AJ for going over the uh, Honeywell Thermal IQ and Chamber IQ. Okay, thank you, Dan. So uh, Honeywell, uh, their thermal uh, HTS, the Honeywell Thermal Solutions Group has recently come out with a uh, new product called Honeywell Thermal IQ. Uh, so this is a cloud-based data access for uh, combustion controls. Uh, so, and I'll get into kind of the details of the hardware, but uh, ultimately it's a, a cloud link modem. So there's a cellular modem that you would install inside of the control panel. It would interface with uh, a couple of different Honeywell combustion devices, uh, mainly the Slate uh, 7800 series flame safeguards. Uh, there are some uh, Krom Schroeder BCU4 and FCU 500 burner controls. Um, Honeywell also has a built of a new valve product called the SV2, uh, and also your uh, UDC controller for temperature control and high temp limit, what you would normally find in a uh, oven furnace or dryer application. Uh, they're all uh, compatible with the Thermal IQ product. Next slide. I got it, Dan. Yeah, so the uh, this is so the Thermal IQ is a uh, is a mobile app. So you would have a uh, application that you would install uh, on your on your mobile device. Uh, it's a uh, it's a Honeywell app that's available for download for free from the App Store. Uh, and then uh, what Honeywell does is they have a uh, you would if you were to go with this product, they would create these. Uh, uh, dashboards or um, templates on uh, that allow you to customize uh, the view, seeing the information that's most critical uh, in your combustion application. Uh, the screen shots that I show here on the presentation show uh, a couple of boilers at the Maxon facility in Muncie, Indiana. And you can see here that on the um, on the top screen, on the boiler screen, you can just quickly see what the flame signal strength is on the flame safeguard, whether it's in uh, run or standby or lockout. Um, you can also see that they're displaying pressure and, and fuel rate. And there's also uh, a number of other menu options within the app, uh, including trending. So you can see on the right side, you can see a trend on uh, and any of the uh, analog signals uh, that are available uh, on that device. Uh, so this particular boiler, uh, so just actually take a step back. Uh, the Muncie boilers are using the Slate system. Uh, so those of you that are familiar with Slate, it's a part burner safety controller, but also part process controller. So you have the ability to bring in uh, various inputs like pressure and fuel flow rate, uh, in addition to uh, extracting any of the information out of the flame safeguard, like uh, flame signal strength. Uh, so uh, when you have a slate system, you've got more data available to send up to the cloud uh, to your phone. Uh, so that's the preferred uh, type of uh, connection or device that you would use with a thermal IQ uh, just because of its uh, flexibility uh, and the ability for it to handle uh, many different types of inputs. Uh, so on this particular application, uh, these trendings will go back about 30 days. Uh, so you've got a kind of a built-in historian using the uh, Honeywell Secure uh, data in the cloud. Now, the other division of Honeywell, the uh, PMC Process Measurement and Controls Division, has a very similar product, uh, but it's just packaged up uh, a little bit differently. Uh, it's a lot more canned in its uh, 
in its uh, templates. Um, and, and they've got a different type of uh, pricing structure depending upon the number of devices uh, that you're connecting with. Um, but theirs is called Chamber IQ. And the Chamber IQ is strictly meant for uh, applications where you've got multiple uh, UDCs where you're looking at the, the different uh, temperatures uh, inside of your chamber. So when you uh, are looking to utilize the Honeywell Chamber IQ, uh, you need to, it uses the Modbus data card that uh, is an optional add-on for your UDC. So if you don't already have uh, the Modbus capabilities on your UDC controller and you want to add it to be able to use the Thermal IQ or Chamber IQ, uh, that's, a, that's an input card that you can add into your system. You can contact us at Lesman uh, if you need some more information about uh, uh, the type of card or the compatibility uh, with your system. Uh, but ultimately, the thermal IQ, or the chamber IQ rather, will, um, will display uh, any of the um, Modbus registers uh, coming out of that UDC uh, that you want to see. So obviously, set point temperatures, uh, the, the uh, chamber temperature, as well as uh, if, you know, if you've got an uh, enhanced model like a 32 or 3500, there's going to be some additional uh, outputs and data available that can also be displayed. So again, similar to the thermal IQ, the chamber IQ is going to have a very similar look and feel. It's going to be the same Honeywell app that you uh, download. And uh, again, you've got a high level screen that just lets you know what's your operating temperature, your percent output. Uh, if it's a controller or if you've got a limit, it'll let you know what your current temperature and your set point uh, temperature are on the unit. And then you can click in and uh, pull up the trend and some of the other uh, settings in there. Uh, this product, as well as the Thermal IQ, also allows you to get notifications. So if you've got uh, on, your, on your Thermal IQ application, if you uh, receive a, a flame failure or some other kind of fault, uh, maybe your interlock opened up or your uh, excess temperature limit interlock opened up, uh, you could get alerts that would pop up on your home screen. So if you don't have the... Uh, app open um, and but it's running in the background it can send an alert to your phone so that you can launch the app uh, take a look at the message and then take corrective action uh, from there so there are some alarm settings that you can go through and put in where i want to be notified if we are if we are approaching the set point so maybe you might want to have an alarm or an alert setting where uh, maybe i haven't reached that high temperature limit yet, but I want to alert me so that I can take corrective action before it shuts my system down. So you can go through and customize uh, the uh, alerts and alarms uh, that you would see uh, uh, through the app um, on the app. And uh, if you noticed here through some of these screens, there were some little red icons. So that's the uh, uh, detection of a uh, presence of an active alarm. So if you've got multiple assets on your system, if you look at that high level view, you can easily look through and see which ones do, uh, do I need to take corrective action on. And then you can click into there and then you can see exactly what the, what the alarm is. So again, like I uh, said before, uh, the uh, Chamber IQ requires the uh, Modbus card, so there's an RS-485 board uh, that you can add into the uh, UDC if you don't already have it. Uh, the hardware uh, for the Chamber IQ uh, is the uh, modem, so they have two different options. They have it in a composite case, which is essentially just a standalone enclosure uh, that houses the modem, uh, or if you have space available inside of your uh, control panel, you can by the modem option that just gets mounted onto a thin rail. Uh, and then this also requires 24 volts DC. So uh, you would need to have a it's power important to note, AJ, it's important to note this is a cellular modem. And Honeywell picked a cellular modem specifically so that people would not have issues getting through the company firewall through any other kind of access. 
So it is a standalone system that communicates cellular data up and down uh, to avoid the interaction with IT and all the network security issues. Yeah, absolutely right. Thanks for reminding me, Dan. So yeah, we've had customers that have been concerned about uh, the data and uh, proprietary data leaving the facility and, and going to uh, an external server. Um, and if you have those same concerns, please let us know. We can arrange uh, a call with Honeywell. Um, they've got uh, uh, the product specialists there know all about the, the uh, security protocols that are in place uh, for the uh, for the Chamber IQ and for that data management. Uh, we, we've had, uh, and Honeywell has had some customers that have had internally very stringent uh, IT measures and were reluctant at first uh, to uh, put a system like this in place. And then once they had a discovery meeting and talked a little bit about how they're managing the data and, uh, and having the secure data, uh, those companies were, were okay with, uh, with using the product. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it back over to Dan and okay. uh, he's going to talk a little bit more about another product. And then after Dan's done, I will have some time for uh, questions and answers. Hi, I'd like to talk a little bit about Water Analytics uh, unit here. Water Analytics, by their name, you might infer is big in uh, water quality. Uh, they, uh, their core business is pH sensors and conductivity sensors for water quality and the associated controllers and analyzers for them. Through that, they saw a need for something that could actually work uh, remotely over the web. So they came out with this AM2300 unit. Now they call it a quarter DIN device. For people that are into this quarter DIN is about four inches by four inches on a panel cutout. And this is four inches by four inches on the panel cutout, but the display, the bezel is much bigger. So it takes up a larger, footprint on the panel, but it gives you a bigger uh, display with which to view your data. So yes, it fits into a quarter DIN cutout, but it's bigger than that. And as you can see from this, it's the actual unit is there in front of you with the black uh, bezel around the display, but it gives you uh, trend charts, gives you digital displays, as you can see back here, in a very nice format. And uh, But it's, it's also the other uh, thing you should be aware of is it's really designed for sensors that are four to 20 milliamp inputs only. It doesn't take a pH uh, sensor directly. It's gotta be a pH transmitter that's got a four to 20 milliamp output. So it takes the four to 20 milliamp inputs from the field sensors. You can name them whatever you want them, scale them however you want them so that you get the proper displays and the trending. It does, it's, uh, the alarm uh, options are by email or text, which is really big in today's world so that people can keep track of this alarming and take some action. It does data logging and the logs can be downloaded from the web. Again, this is a .csv file uh, situation uh, where you pull up the CSV file, open it in Excel, get the column of numbers. And then if you want to graph it, you have to use Excel's graphing applications to do it. And uh, it also has security on it so that you can limit who gets into it and so on. Uh, this screenshot just shows you uh, on the bottom there, somebody has a uh, mobile device and they're looking at exactly what's on the, uh, it, with, with a couple second delay. You'll notice that the 6.54 is slightly than the, different than the 6.52 because the instrument is faster and it takes a moment to get it up through the uh, web connection to the uh, handheld device. But essentially you're viewing the same thing on a handheld device through a web connection as you have on the uh, unit itself when it's installed and operating and reading there. Uh, very nice little compact unit, great displays. Uh, and it, by the way, it does more than water quality. Anything that you've got that's a four to 20 milliamp signal will work on this device. They just emphasize water quality because that's what the rest of their, of their uh, business is. So I'm finished on that. AJ, you wanna take questions? Yeah, Dan, thank you very much. So, so that's all the slides that we had uh, for you guys today. Appreciate your time and I'll open it up now. There is a uh, questions, uh, there's an area in the, uh, um, uh, on your, on your um, 
screen where you can go through and, and type in any questions. So I'll give you guys uh, just a, a minute to go through and uh, if you do have any questions, go ahead and type them out. Um, I also just wanted to let you know that uh, we are, uh, if, if you don't have any questions now, uh, you can uh, email us. Uh, my email address is ajp at lessman.com and Dan is Dan W at Lessman.com. So if you think of anything uh, after the fact, you can uh, go through and uh, email us. Uh, we'd be happy to go through and address and answer your questions. So I am I'm not showing any questions for us to answer. I think we did an excellent job in covering uh, all the products and looks like we were incredibly clear. Again, uh, if you do have any questions, please feel free to email us. Uh, there is a uh, the, where you went to register for this webinar at lessman.com slash train. Uh, there will be a link to uh, this recording. Uh, so if you want to go back through and, and play it back, uh, you can go through and play it back and also you can ask us questions through the, uh, uh, you know, through, through there as well. There'll be links for us to get a hold of us. Actually, we do have a question here from Austin. Uh, Danny's asking, our customers um, are adverse to even cellular data use due to proximity of sensitive instrumentation, sensitive instruments. Uh, how do you address that? Uh, let's see here. So Austin, is the concern that the cellular data will, so it's sensitive instruments, right? So, so at least with the thermal IQ, chamber IQ, uh, the cellular modems do have uh, antennas and you can go through and route those antennas uh, uh, to, uh, to a different area or up to the roof, somewhere that would be away from the uh, sensitive instruments. Uh, Dan, do you have anything else to add about antennas and sensitive no, equipment, other, sensitive other instruments? Than the fact that the, other than the fact that the cellular modem doesn't have to be right next to the instrumentation. You wire the signals from the UDC uh, to the uh, cellular modem, so the cellular modem can be 300 feet away from the instrumentation in a location where it gets good cell reception. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, the Honeywell's got that that separate standalone in its own little enclosure yep. device, and you can put that. It doesn't have to be right there by the instruments. Good point, Dan. Uh, Dan, I got a question from Doug. He's asking, is there a software package needed for the water analytics unit? No, that is strictly a uh, web browser access. So you, you launch the web browser. Uh, presumably, you've got a VPN. Uh, you, you type in the IP address in your web browser, it goes through the VPN and it connects to the uh, water analytics unit. All right, thanks for clarifying, Dan. Uh, I think that looks like that's it for the questions. So again, I appreciate everybody's time uh, this morning. Uh, again, if you've got any questions, feel free to to email us or contact uh, Lesman. We'll, you can reach our 800 number and, and they'll get you through to Dan or I or your uh, direct sales uh, engineer uh, that's assigned for your account and we'll make sure to get you squared away. And I just wanted to, again, thank everybody and stay safe. Thank you guys, and appreciate it. your time. Have a good, yeah, thank you for your time. Have a good rest of your morning.